This video is an excerpt from our SR Lounge premium workshops. To learn more or purchase, simply go to srlounge.com forward slash store. My name is Pai and enjoy the video. It's time to talk about the gear that went into this shoot. Now guys and gals, I don't want you to get hung up on the gear. This is the whole reason why we made Photography 101 and Lighting 101. We showed you how to create amazing images using a Costco $500 DSLR, using standard kit lenses, using inexpensive $100 prime lenses, using on-camera flash for crying out loud to create off-camera effects, all that kind of stuff. We showed you that it doesn't take incredible gear to make incredible images. So with everything I'm about to show you, just remember that the inexpensive versions of all of this stuff will yield virtually the same result, if not 90% of the same result, okay? Just keep that in your heads. I just don't want anyone to get hung up on my camera. I don't have a 5D Mark III, you don't need one. Okay, so let's start from the top with our camera body. For our shoot, we're using the Canon 5D Mark III, and um, let's see, any DSLR is totally fine in this place, okay? Whether you're shooting Sony or Nikon or Canon Rebel, whatever you got, as long as it has a hot shoe mount so that you can control your off-camera flashes, it's totally good. Now remember in this course, we're gonna be covering basically content that's talked about in Lighting 201 and Lighting 301. So if you need more information on lighting and setups and so forth, check out the foundational courses. We're gonna basically assume that you've already watched those, that you already have a foundation in this course as we go through. So for our lenses, we are primarily using the Sigma 50 millimeter art. We also have the Sigma 85, and I also use the Canon 85. I actually just barely got the Sigma 85. The Canon 85 1.2L was the one that I was using. The Sigma 85 is absolutely fantastic, actually. It's a really nice lens. I'm waiting, though, for their art version. Their art lenses are incredible. Oh, my gosh. Talk about you're getting basically better lenses than name brand equivalents, like all of the, the super luxury line lenses from Canon and Nikon and all the third-party manufacturers. Sigma's basically on par, if not better in quality and everything, and they're essentially half the price with their art lineup. So the art lenses are the first place to look, and I'm dying for that 85 millimeter art. We're also using the 100 millimeter macro. This is the Canon 100 millimeter macro. Again, I think Sigma has a 105 macro, which is another fantastic option. So these are the basically the three lenses, the three focal lengths that we're using for this session. Again, we're shooting portraits and we're shooting close up. So we don't really want to go wider than a 50 millimeter. And we're only using the 50 millimeter when we need to get essentially wider type shots. Like when we're shooting like the bathtub image top down, that's where we need to get a little bit wider. When we're shooting to get the window light kind of coming in in that image, that's where we need to get a little bit wider. Otherwise, if I'm in on the face, I want to be at 85 millimeters, if not tighter, so that I don't get distortion, okay? Now to control our off-camera flashes, we are using the Fotix Odin transceiver on top of the flash uh, hot shoe. And then our off-camera flashes themselves are the Fotix Metros Pluses. Now again, in Lighting 201 and 301, we talk about the Metros Plus. It is our favorite off-camera flash unit because it's 400 bucks a piece. So 400 bucks for this flash. Now that sounds expensive, but it also comes built in with a radio. So you don't have any need to basically have pocket wizards or other third-party triggering mechanisms and wires and cables. It's all ready to go. It's essentially a Canon 600 EXRT, but for, well, it used to be 200 bucks less. Now the Canon has dropped in price, most likely because this guy was 400 bucks. So Canons are still 100 bucks more. They're 500 bucks. So it's a fantastic option. But again, remember, if it's not in the budget right now, that's okay. These are amazing units. The reason why we love them so much is because they're very reliable. You can use them on professional shoots and they're gonna fire consistently. But a great entry level option is like say a Yongnuo or a newer. Both those flashes can be bought for around 100 to or 70 to 100 bucks a piece. So they're a quarter of the price and they have built-in radio systems as well. They're fantastic entry level flashes. I'd say that if you're on professional shoots, have spares with you because again, quality control on those kind of units can be a little bit off. These guys I can rely on 100% of the time. Sometimes a Yongno or a newer will break or something goes wrong and you need to get one extra out of your bag, but they still work. So they're great entry level options that I'd recommend. Okay, so that's the flash side. Now let's go ahead and talk about, well, let's start with the flash modification. 
For modification, we use the Westcott Apollo Series strips uh, or orbs. Okay, so the Westcott Apollo Series softbox are amazing softboxes. Now we ran into a little issue, which we'll talk about on location with this specific shoot. But here's what these guys do: they store basically like an umbrella, but then they fold out to essentially become softboxes. So these guys are incredibly portable. Let me get this little thing in the way. They're incredibly portable, and they become softboxes basically on demand. Okay. So they're fantastic tools. You can get grids for them. They come with diffusers and they're great light modifiers when you're working with pocket strokes, when you're working on the go. So those are fantastic. Now to put those basically onto a stand, you're gonna need a stand. We use two different types of stands. We use one is the Manfrotto Nano Stand. These are about 50 to 70 bucks a piece. There are cheaper stands like this, but this is going to be the lightest, the smallest. It's very durable. It stands up to a lot of abuse. I've had these things forever and I use them a ton. So they're fantastic little stands. We also have a hot shoe modifier just to, to place a, it's just an umbrella hot shoe bracket up here, or sorry, this is actually a cold shoe bracket. So we have one on top. So these are the kind of micro stands that I'd recommend. They're going to hold up and last over time. You know, you can get, you can get stands for 20 bucks, but most likely you're going to be replacing them every year or so because they're going to break and have issues. The other stand that we use frequently is a Matthews C stand. Now you can get tons of different types of C stands. This is the Matthews version of a C stand. I prefer it because again, these knuckle grips are very comfortable. They're ergonomically kind of rounded and shaped. So they're very comfortable and easy to move very high quality. Again, it's only about 130 bucks for one of those stands. And those are fantastic for when you need to place items up very high, or if you need to basically put them and boom them in at certain angles and you need to be able to support more weight. So you can easily put sandbags on the legs and you can have that ready to go basically. So those are the two primary stands that we're using. Now for other modifiers, let's talk about the other modifiers. So this is that, uh, this is the umbrella cold shoe mount. Okay. So we have a cold shoe mount right here. It has an umbrella port right there and it fits onto a regular stand. You can get these for like 10 bucks off of Amazon. We have different types of grids. Now I believe on this shoot, we actually use the, uh, this is the Gary Fong grid system. I got it and I used it because I haven't used it before and it worked really, really well, but really any grid system is going to work well. My, my favorite still overall is the Magmod system because it's very elegantly designed. It comes with basically your, your gels as well. It has grids, it fits on with magnets. So it's very clean and very easy to use, but you can also get things that are a little less expensive. I think this guy's like 50 bucks. These Velo grids, these are like 15 or 20 bucks a piece. The Magmod system for everything together. I think that's around like say 80 bucks last. Actually not last, we have one more modifier that we're gonna talk about. I take this stuff onto every single shoot. This is basically a, well, it's just foam core, okay? On one side it's black, on the other side it's white. You can get this from any camera shop, but it's the stuff that you buy, when you typically buy it, it's coming in big sheets and you use it to make V-flats. But I also cut out small squares like this because it makes for great flags. Flag is basically when you want to cut the light. So if you wanna cut the light from hitting anything, you use the black side or it makes for an amazing bounce when you want to modify light. So you can bounce off the white side, which we're going to use a lot in this tutorial series. So they're very great and inexpensive light modifiers. I think each one of these, like for an entire sheet of it, which cuts into like several of these is like 15 or 20 bucks. So you can make a V flat for like 20 bucks. Okay. Just go to your local camera shop for that guy. Okay. So that's all of our lights, our lenses, our modifiers. Now, Let's talk about the last production item that I want to talk is this guy. Ugh. Okay, this is the Roscoe Mini V. This is our fog machine. We use fog machines quite a bit on these types of shoots because essentially it opens up the background a little bit, it creates a little bit of that ambience to the room. And I don't want it necessarily to look like there's smoke in the room. I just want it to look like there's an ambience like in that, in that setting. It creates an amazing kind of fill light. It, it works really well for creating like light um, the lines that come off like through windows, like those light lines and everything like that. It's a fantastic item that's going to really up the production value of our shoots. Now to buy one of those, it's actually not as much as you might think. The Roscoe Mini V, which is really all the fog machine you're going to need. And Roscoe is probably the best manufacturer in fog machines as far as reliability, durability, and so forth. That guy's 450 bucks, not as expensive as you might think, but still, if that's too much, then you can just rent it. You could rent them for about 20 to 30 bucks a day and just rent it for your shoot and then go ahead and return it. We use this a ton, so it makes sense to buy. Now the fluid itself, that stuff lasts forever. Like if you're doing like little shoots like this indoors, 
one little one liter of that fluid, which is like 10 bucks or 15 bucks, that'll last you probably like 50 shoots. If you're trying to fog up entire outdoor environments, then you might end up using quite a bit more fog. You might use like a half a bottle per you know use. But for small shoots, like indoor shoots, basically, yeah, it lasts for a very long time. Okay, so that's all of our production gear. Now on the post-production side, I wanna talk about a couple things. We're gonna be using Adobe Lightroom for all of our raw processing. We're gonna be using Adobe Photoshop for all of our retouch and kind of finalization type work. For the Photoshop side, well actually let's talk about the Lightroom side first. For the Lightroom side, you're gonna need a decent computer that's actually at a pace that isn't so slow it's gonna hold you back. But other than that, I would highly recommend you get a high resolution mouse. Now this is the Logitech G500. This is actually a gaming mouse. It's weighted as well. Now what that means is that with that weight, I can get very smooth motions in the, uh, in the mouse, okay? So it's as close as you're gonna get to a accurate like kind of pen type mouse without actually using a pen tablet. For Lightroom, this is really all you need. A high resolution mouse is totally adequate because we're not gonna be doing super detailed type stuff inside of Lightroom. We're gonna save that for Photoshop. Now in Photoshop, I would highly recommend a Wacom tablet, okay? This is the Intuos, this is the Wacom Intuos, this is the pro medium size tablet, which is actually very large, okay? When I saw the medium online, I'm like, I need the medium. And then I got it, I'm like, wow, that's a lot bigger than I thought it would be. It has quite a big footprint on my desk. But we use these pen tablets because when it comes to creating natural lines and retouching and doing Photoshop work, this is really the only way to go. Now, I would recommend Wacom over any other tablet brand, and I've used a lot of brands. Why? Because their software is the best. It's responsive. It doesn't lag. It features the best pressures and sensitivity and all the features that you want and need. These guys have set the bar. They're, they've set the entire standard when it comes to tablets. So walk them into us. You can get the small, you can get the medium, the large. If you're only doing like retouch and basic stuff, you can get the uh, bamboos. The bamboos are, are like a hundred bucks and they're still fantastic. And they have all the things that you're going to really need in that little guy. I know professional retouchers that use bamboos. Okay. So all you need is that pen tool so you can get nice natural lines. You guys can work with the hair. You guys can work with different features on the face. The main component of that is the pressure sensitivity. So as we're working with skin, we can get nice and natural results. It's something that we just can't get with a mouse. That's it for all the gear that we're gonna be using. Oh, one more little tip. When you guys are working with colors and you guys are working on your computer and you guys are dealing with basically how to get images to have the right color, get a color calibrator. This guy's actually plugged in right now, I didn't even realize. We prefer the X-Rite i1 Pro. This is the i1 Display Pro, um, a fantastic calibrator. We also have used the Spider Elites, which work really well as well, but we've, we've kind of transitioned over the i1s. We find they're a little bit more accurate in color. We like them just a little bit better. So those are a great color calibrator for your display. So make sure you're using a wide gamut display and then calibrate it before you start working and color correcting images. Otherwise, who knows what kind of colors you're gonna be getting out of them. That's it for our gear. Let's go ahead and move on to the next video now. Finally, we're moving on to the sexy. This is the sizzle. This is where we get to talk about the actual production. And we're starting first with lighting in scene number one or uno, 